Let's go over uh, Nevin's Law, but no, before we do that, take a seat, relax. We're gonna go back a little bit in time. Let's go over uh, Nevin's Law, but no, before we do that, we're gonna talk about a gentleman named Moore. So, before we talk about Nevins, Nevins is a bit of an extrapolation from what many of us have known for decades now, which is Moore's Law. So Gordon Moore was the co-founder of Fairchild Semiconductor and Intel, who in 1965 noticed and proposed that every year circuits were integrated circuits, more specifically, were doubling in their processing power every year. And then in 1975, it was shown that had happened. So Mr. Moore revised his law, and law is used loosely because it's an interpret, it's an, it's a theory, it's an interpretation, revised it such that integrated circuits would then from that point on after 1975 would double in their ability to process information. In other words, they would be able to process twice as quickly as they had before. So sometimes this is applied to hard drives and other storage techniques, solid state, non-solid state, but specifically it was, specifically this was originally regarding the integrated circuit. So let's fast forward a little bit. Fast forward to about three years ago, there was an article in Scientific American from 2019, and it proposed a new law suggested by a man named Hartmut Nevin, who was the director of Google's AI lab. And one of the things that he noticed was that as he requiring specific amounts of quantum computer processing power, he was having to ask for more and more when he compared it to conventional computing. What he also noticed was that it was growing not just exponentially every two years like Moore's law, it was growing doubly exponential. Why is that? So if you have an integrated circuit, all other things being equal, if, let's just have a CPU, and you increase the, let's just say the clock frequency of that CPU by 10%, you effectively get about 10% performance. Now, if you increase the number of integrated circuits also by 10%, you also get about 10% increase because you have more integrated circuits built into that CPU. Now, the difference with a quantum CPU and a classical CPU is that every time you increase the number of bits or qubits, as they're called in a quantum CPU, by one, you double the processing power. The effective processing power of that logical qubit, you double it. So as the qubits, as time is passing and the qubits themselves are going up, giving more processing power. And when I say qubits, I'm usually referring to logical qubits. As those are going up, you also have each qubit doubling the processing power of that CPU. So as time passes, you're getting more and more qubits, but as you get more and more qubits, every qubit added doubles the power. So for example, by storing information, two qubits can store four bits, three qubits can store eight, and four qubits can store 16. By the time we get to 10 qubits or so, there are 1024 bits of information. And at around 20 qubits, you can roughly you can manipulate roughly 1 million bits of information. This is that exponential growth. It'll be interesting to see how this evolves over time. There are a lot of people working on these systemic problems with quantum computing. The most prolific problem perhaps is systemic noise when you're trying to take a essentially a quantum CPU and you're trying to isolate it from the known universe. You're trying to remove any systemic noise so that the qubits in the processor stay in a state of superposition, which is re just removing all outside influence, re reducing the temperature of 
of the CPU down to fractions of a degree above absolute zero, re removing radio frequency or any electromagnetic interference to that CPU. So it's effectively from a relationship of cause and effect and causality, it's separated. And in the and while those qubits are in superposition, the state that they're in can only be described mathematically. They are considered to not actually physically exist, which takes us off a little bit into some fringe theories of simulation theory and other things like that. But I want to do this quick video on Nevin's Law and tell you, tell everyone what it's about and why it's important. As I've said in the past before, this feels a lot like Moore's Law. History doesn't always repeat, but quite often it does rhyme. 